My wife and I happened to be home at the same time, which is a rarity sometimes, some weeks. And we had it, looked at an image on the television screen because we knew that that image was going to be appearing before us, so we wanted to see the faces. And as we both looked at those faces, we realized that something was different in this country. And then the scene cut away, and the commentator for the news program said, the three phases that you just, he said, before I want to talk about what just happened in terms of what was announced, I want to tell you what it was to see these three faces on the television screen and what it says for the future of this country in terms of the face of America. So the three faces were, were these. On the left was a white guy. He had been in the place that white guys have been in for 230 years. He's the vice president, Joe Biden. In the center was a black guy, an African American. He was the first one ever to occupy that place. And in fact, his wife is the great granddaughter of the slaves, peers of the same people who built the house that they're now calling home. On the right was a brown face our country's first ever woman nominee for Supreme Court. Those three faces spoke volumes about this country and what it is to be an American these days. And the question that it makes us contemplate is what do those three faces mean on the screen for us, the Jews in this country? Because they do mean something about the way this country is changing. And the question that we have to ask ourselves is, how are we going to respond? How are we going to deal with the transformation of this country? And let me give you some circumstances to kind of round out the picture. This Sunday, I'm going to be at an LA Voice leadership retreat. LA Voice is a community organizing network connected with a national network. LA Voice is based in LA, not the newspaper. This is the network citywide, faith-based, interfaith organizing network. The mission of LA Voice is to organize communities across all faiths to create, to work for social change, to change the circumstances of life in this city that enable whatever community is organizing to pursue its, its goals better than it did before change happened. That can be achieved through legislation, it can be achieved through community action, but the goal is to make change that's beneficial for all of LA citizens as well as that community. Currently, as a matter of fact, we're working, speaking about citywide, we're working with LA Voice on a citywide affordable housing ordinance to see if we can create more housing for our children when they come home from college to be able to afford to live near us and not live in Valencia or Piru or wherever else they have to go to find affordable housing. The room is gonna be filled with leadership from 25 congregations. All of them are involved in organizing in Los Angeles. Three of the congregations are Jewish. Those are the white faces in the room. The rest of the, congregation, of the congregations that are organizing are black or Latino. Now, if you walk into most churches in Los Angeles, and I've been able, through my work with LA Voice, to walk into a couple to stand on what in churches is called the altar and to look out in the community what you'll see and what you'll hear is very different from what goes on in here. There are two languages in here. Hebrew, obviously, and English. In a church in Los Angeles, you'll hear simultaneous translations of the pastor's words into sometimes Spanish, Korean, sometimes Tagalog. The Catholic Church in this city alone speaks dozens of languages. The Episcopal Church preaches a gospel in dozens of countries and evangelicals reach out to people of all colors. So now, look around this room. I know what you'll see, because I know what I see. And even when this room is filled to capacity for the high holidays, if you look around the room, what you're going to see are mostly white faces. Now, Stephen Wise happens to be unusual among congregations. Stephen Wise and and Sinai Temple are unusual because we actually have a Persian community. So in terms of shades, we at least as two Jewish congregations managed to go a shade or two darker. But in general, 
you look at it in a Jewish congregation, we don't have that variety of colors that you see in so many Christian communities. That's who we are. I'm not advocating that we somehow or another change that about us. But the question I'm asking you is what does it say for the way we engage the world that's around us? You see, for centuries, if you think about it, the Jewish community is focused inward. That's been our concern. Look at how we define the world. The world is composed of Jews and non-Jews. Now just think about that for a minute, okay? We're saying that 99.75% of the world is something else. Whatever that is, is sort of irrelevant because 0.25% us, we're Jews. That's an interesting way of looking at the world, but it tells you how inner-focused we are. And we've built our communities. We survived because of that inward focus. We've maintained our integrity as a people because of that inward focus. We've rebuilt a country in the land of Israel because of that inward focus. And it makes sense because for hundreds of years we had no choice. We were ghettoized, whether we lived under Islamic rule or Christian rule. We were forced, literally by walls built around our communities, to fo focus inward. And our engagement with the world around us was only through a couple of designated representatives, and they negotiated our way through the societies. And if you take a look at our religion as it's evolved over the centuries, it was crafted essentially for a separation to be created between us and the other world and, and the other people. Why else would you say that we're limited in what we eat? What is it the Kashru does? It says to the observant Jew, you can't eat with them. You can't eat at their restaurants. You can't go out even when people socialize. You need to maintain your separation. What's Shabbat? What are the holidays? They keep a, we're at a different day. The way we observe them, we're in synagogues with our own. We have meals with our own. They keep us focused on ourselves. Even the Zionist dream of Jewish self-determination, which I endorse, but if you think about it, it reflected that isolationist mentality. What kind of a state are we going to build? Not a secular, multicultural, multi-ethnic state, but a Jewish state. Now, don't hear me wrong, I'm all for a Jewish state. I'm just reflecting on how we've evolved. And that isolationist mentality, it's worked well. Here's the question. If that screen, the television screen, is the face of this country, and if the world is increasingly multi-ethnic, multicultural, and if cultures are moving from their nations of origins to new countries to live and call their own, will that inner focus that has served us so well for the past 3,000 years continue to serve us moving forward? When we have mixed, it's been predominantly with white America. On some level, Jews aspire to be Protestants. That's the reality. Even the way we sit in our synagogues as modern Jews, we separate ourselves from the orthodox style of worship. We sit composed and quiet, just like Protestants. That's what we want to be. But that image on the screen of a black, a Latina, and a white American asks the question of us, and it says to us, what about our image? Have we got an image problem? Well, not really. Can't change our skin color. 